Right, before I go and meet a friend that's just bought a new car, start today's video, I want to run you past something I've been using a lot recently. I've been using HelloFresh deliveries. They've been getting delivered to my door for good reason. Now, as many of you will be aware, I'm a busy bee. I don't have time to go to the supermarket. I often find I'm away weeks at a time, very often at short notice. And I was getting absolutely sick of going to the supermarket, buying a load of stuff, and then it going off in the fridge because I just didn't, I wasn't in to cook it. I come back to moldy stuff in my fridge, not ideal. Wastage, not ideal at all. And I was also spending a fortune on food that I wasn't even eating. And I've actually tended to yo-yo between that and takeaways, which is a really unhealthy way of living. But HelloFresh actually means I get healthy food delivered to my door at a convenient time, weekly dropped off, and I can cancel and skip at any time. It also caters to the fact that I'm vegetarian slash vegan, and also Ianthi is vegan as well. Even for the fussiest eaters out there, there's so much choice on HelloFresh, and actually it's really good value for money. Meals start at just £3.15 per person. The other good thing about HelloFresh, particularly for me, and it doesn't apply to Anthony, I'm actually learning how to cook. She knows how to cook already, I haven't got a clue, and I'm learning with the easy to follow step-by-step -step recipes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave a code on the screen, TGTV, that'll actually get you 60% off your first box and 25% off the next two months worth of boxes for you to try and get in the mix with. There's a reason it's UK's number one recipe box, and actually there's so much choice on there, you'd be amazed. It caters to absolutely everyone. For me, for example, some weeks if I'm training a lot more than others, I'll go high protein. You really can tailor it every single week to whatever you want to be in there. That is, as I'm sure you're not gonna be surprised to hear, a limited offer. So that will end in September. And there's a limited amount of times that can be used. So get in the mix, redeem it before it goes, and let me know how you get on with your culinary skills. Now for now, I've got to get changed, sort myself out, get out of here, and go and meet a good friend who's just bought a Ferrari 430 Scuderia. So let's go. Hello, you horrible lot, and welcome back to CGTV. More specifically, ladies and gentlemen, I've got my gum guard in again. An unpleasant start to today's video. Once again, I'm obsessed with my Invisalign. Today, however, more excitingly than my ongoing Invisalign, is this 430 Scuderia, because my friend, as the title suggests, has bought a 430 Scuderia. He is a familiar face on the channel. He is a familiar face on the car scene, on YouTube. He's a slip. He's just run past me. You were too fast. You need to come back. Superman, there we go. Uh, he is a familiar face, is none other than Mr. 888 MF. Hello, sir, how are you doing? Brilliant. Brilliant. We're you... back in YouTube Square. We're back on YouTube Square because I can think The last time we were here was with my four litre and your 991 GT3 RS. I'm sure I've seen you more recently than that. That was literally no, seven that's years the last time we came to YouTube Square to do a, a video with two cars. There we go, and we've, we've come home to roost because what a place to film videos. In the middle of a busy square in London, what a place to film a lightweight Ferrari, Mark. Yes, well, yeah. we're on a budget. <laughs> Welcome to my channel, everyone. I just put no effort in whatsoever. Marky, we're going to do a little interview here because you're a man of substantial car history. Yes. And this car came around as a result of another one leaving the stable. Yes, the four litre. The one four litre. You had two four litres. Yes. I think we should, I think first, Mark, would you like to take us around the car and explain all about this car? Not all about it, we don't have all day, but you know, the main... I don't know main... much about it. Fine, I did used that's to have good. a Stradale. Yeah. You went in two nights before it was smashed up. Yeah, by yeah. me. Not I got annoyed you. and baseball battered it. Car? Yeah, I do, and a taxi hit it. Taxi hit it. So I, I took you out on Sloan Street. I love that and car. two days later, I love that car. So the Stradale was the first lightweight V8. Blue with tan. That was TDF blue with tan. So that car was more like a race car for the road. Yep didn't really do a lot. It had five valves per cylinder, which is why it screamed, that engine screamed. Yeah. This has four valves per cylinder. Four. Not as loud. Not as loud. Not as loud. Are we gonna do anything about that? Is there gonna be a holding your ears thumbnail with a with a new exhaust coming? I'd like to get one. What, which one do you recommend? Let us know in the comments, Marky. Novitec? I don't, I actually Caprista. don't know. I don't know what's the best. It would just be a case, I guess, of just uh, you, you know, YouTubing them with exhaust on them and working out which one sounds best. There is a little problem with the exhaust. When you put the exhaust on, it basically uh, messes up the cold start. So oh. The mixture at the beginning when you turn on the engine. It's not brilliant for the car and warning lights come on. So, but it, it is a little bit quiet, especially compared to a Challenger Ferrari. But this one but, was yes. designed when Michael Schumacher was at Ferrari. Yes. And so it drives better than a Stradale. The yes. gear changes quicker than a Stradale. 
Uh, it still has the ceramic brakes. Wonderful. It, I must admit, it looks amazing. So you got rid of a black four litre for got this car. Left hand drive, black GT3 RS four litre for a right hand drive Ford AT Scuderia, yes. I think that's a very good deal. And you got cash. Got cash in between. You left with a, a substantial chunk of cash. I don't know what substantial is to you. Uh, <laughs> two quid at the moment. <laughs> Uh, a, a decent wallop yeah, did, of cash did, uh, did and this. I did a deal with uh, Amari Supercars. They did a part exchange deal and um, they gave me some cash. So, here we go. What do you want to know? I don't really... Uh, I don't really know what I want to know, Marky. It's a stripped out Ferrari. Yes. The, the best part about this car is this. Okay. Check out this engine. Look at this. Look at this. Woo. That, oh. That's what you call an engine. All covered in carbon fibre. Dare I say, this is from an era where Ferraris were cool. Can I say that? I, Can I know, say that? a lot of people think the 458 Speciale is cooler, but the Speciale has evolved to the dual clutch gearbox. Yes. Which I personally feel like, a lot of dual clutches feel like automatics. Yeah. They don't give you any kind of feeling of changing gears. No, you're right. Um, I've been in a 458 Speciale recently. My friend Ellie's got one. I've driven lots of them. This is rawer, yeah. which means you don't want to use it as often. Yep. But on those occasions when you do take it out, it rewards more. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard that these actually, they're quite visceral and they do feel very, very special. Well, you're going to drive it in a moment. So I'm going to drive us. it at yeah. 15 miles an hour around London. What a channel this is, Mark. Uh, mm. So this is obviously the standard exhaust. What's cool when you replace the exhaust, you actually can see it right here. It's nice of you, if I want to polish this up. Yeah, I wouldn't touch it now. So this is the, uh, this is only like, I've only had it three or four times out, so I haven't, cleaned it yet, it hasn't been to NVM for detail. But the NVM. seats are really, really, really beautiful. And it's got this painted stripe, which is beautiful. Painted stripe, not stickers, and you've got carbon absolutely everywhere. This is a little bit lash, this bit. I like that, I like that a lot. Oh, I like it. It's a very cool car, Mark. I love it, I actually love it. Um, should we go for a little spin -a then? Do you want to fire up very quickly? And we'll listen to her here, and then we'll get out of here before we get an 80 pound fine for being antisocial. Here we go. Good Lord. I actually felt that on my pantaloons there. Christ. Good heavens. Good, good heavens, Marky. It's rather loud, so Ra we'll try. Rather a loud one. Yes, let me get my uh, high-tech GoPro, put it in the window, and then we're gonna interview you on your car history and what's coming next. Uh, for your channel as well, because you are a YouTuber. Uh, we are small, YouTubers. I'm a small YouTuber. No, you're not, you're a very big YouTuber. No, I'm a small YouTuber. <laughs> Lots of millions of views, Marky. I've seen the stats. I've been in there, I've had a look. It's very good. The views were higher when you used to be on the channel. I know, I'm a very popular man on YouTube. Actually, no, I'm not. Not anymore. Right, we are live, and I'm in a 430 Scuderia on YouTube Square. This is very exciting. Uh, one cool thing I do like about this generation of Ferrari, old school handbrake. Yeah, not that electric. Yeah, oh, that thing. electric guff. I hate Mark. that. Okay, I've done, the, I've done the paddles, but we're in auto. Is there a... You're clear. You're clear. Go, 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 go. It's the go. front of your car if I'm not. And you're clear. <laughs> yeah, so the, this is still a semi automatic F1. So it's quite slow, quite the gearbox. It's faster than a Stradale, but it's still a little bit slow. Have you so driven you... E gear before? What's E gear? Uh, the Lambo sort of automated manual, basically. No. Oh, you mean like on the Gallardos? Yeah. Uh, I have. Similar to this. Similar to the Stradale. Which is better or worse? Similar, well, it's the same as the Stradale, that was that generation. Where should we go, Marky? This is okay. Yeah, Where happy? should we go? I'm happy, yeah, you're a great driver. I am, aren't I? How many Ferraris have you got? I've only got one. Testarossa? Yeah, just the Testarossa. You sold your F12? I did sell it, yeah. The market bounced back up on it and I thought, do you know what? Uh, I don't want to pay for warranty, servicing, storage, blah, blah, blah for another year, because it was going to cost me £41,000 cash flow for the year, including finance payments and whatnot. Um, so I thought, I drove it nine times the F12 F12 is a wonderful car. It is, and I really regret it. So. It's better than that Testarossa. Oh, Marky. No, <laughs> Testarossa. It looks amazing. Very, it, very old. Yeah, you actually know that car. You've I, been in it. 
I do know the uh, ex owner, yes. And I did a stop and I. <laughs> 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 We're okay, Mark. I'm driving on the whole time. I'm I didn't fine. think I'd be nervous with someone driving my car. Okay. Here we go. Let's go. I'm, do you know what I'm most nervous of in London? Tell me. Mopeds. What about cyclists? No, because uh, no, they don't tend to be the stabby ones. Cyclists don't stab you. Okay. Okay, we're having monkey. Good to know. <laughs> Good to know. Um, this is a really raw visceral you know, supercar it's really exciting to drive just posting though yeah i thought it was going to be horrible i must admit when i thought i'm going to drive this around london i'm, I'm going to absolutely hate it but you can live with this the air so you know, cold so you know adrian adrian yeah good, good egg. egg. Yeah, yeah so adrian came with me to amari and i had just got back from new york and i had jet lag yeah. and i started driving to amari are in preston so four hours from london yeah amari. so i started driving and i suddenly my eyes started closing from jet lag, I couldn't yeah. keep my eyes open. So Adrian had to drive the whole way back. And he said exactly the same as you. He drove four hours, even in the rain, dark. He said, it's such an easy car to drive. It's really not that bad at all. Gear changers are nice. The seats yeah. are really comfortable, the sport seats. Yeah, they're good. Are they adjustable as well? Do they fold forward and yeah, back? Yeah, they do. They go back and forward and they're carbon backed. Nice. And the aircon works really well. Yep, I can confirm that. Great visibility. Yeah. Steering's I, light. It's good, other than the infotainment, which is basically non-existent. There is no infotainment. Oh, you've it's got radio no radio? Radio delete. Radio delete. Yeah, do you want me to sing? Uh, not just yet, we've been in here yeah. five minutes, but you okay. know, a few minutes in maybe. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I think it's cool. I think it's a really cool. Are we really going to talk about the fact that you're wearing your girlfriend's glasses? Yeah, six ninety nine from H&M if anyone wants them. <laughs> I'll leave a link on my, uh, on my Instagram that makes me but money. She, she's cool. She is cool, I'm go, not. Go follow her on Instagram. Well, no, she's cool, so you're cool. Yes. Are we gonna get it above? We're not, because we're in town, Marky, and I work with blue chip brands, and we're not to be seen speeding in built up areas. There are other channels for that, okay. but we remain. Triple so <laughs> play MF? I mean, I, I wouldn't, no, I, would, I didn't mean you. I definitely didn't mean you. If you, if you want, no, I'm gonna get myself in trouble. Shop. It's very nice, isn't it? I'm very happy in here, and actually, it's not very crashy. This is a horrible piece of road. Oh, you've got the uh, soft suspension setting. Oh, have you got bumpy road even yeah, in this? There, look. It's got bumpy road setting. Bumpy road setting. I love this car. Yeah. That's my favourite thing about modern Ferraris: bumpy road setting. Oh, I, got I don't back. think it works as well in this as something like an F12 because it's set up like a race car, right? So I I'm really happy in here. I want one of these. So let's talk money then. How yeah. much for a good one? How much for a ropey one? And this is a good one, is it not? This is low miles, yeah, right hand this is drive, done. clean, this is yada, yada, yada. Just under 13,000 miles, so fairly low mileage. You've got to remember, I think, you know, you want to buy cars that have been driven. Yeah. You don't want to buy a car that's just been sitting in a garage. No, particularly true of this kind of modern classic era. There's quite a lot to go wrong on them, um, and things do perish if they just sit about. My Challenge Stradale was in the garage for six months. I took it out drove it for like an hour and the actuator broke on the gearbox so perfect you know I stuck on the motorway with all the gearbox oil coming out the bottom of the car yeah. so you have to drive you have to drive them you have to drive them so uh, this is a 2008 model oh okay so I think you want something with at least a thousand miles a year on it right yeah yeah absolutely I think um, so. so they a ropey one well a high mileage one I think is about 180, 185. Okay. And you're looking at around 220 for a low mileage one from a Ferrari dealer. And okay. then everything in between. So quite a spread. That doesn't strike me as too bad at all. Well, I tell you what's ridiculous. The 458 Speciales are 315 to 400. I mean. Yeah. And they, they did go down to sort of mid Two, 200s they went to about 270 when they were down but i mean if you want a low mileage the equivalent car like a fifth 13,000 mile 458 speciality would cost you around 315 320. is there a hundred thousand pounds are they a hundred thousand pounds better let's talk production numbers then oh, i'm presuming that. i'm presuming this is a much rarer car i'm sure someone out there on that that's not the place you go if you've got a moped you don't overtake on the left Ladies and gentlemen, no inside overtaking. No, absolutely not. That's how you end up uh, squeezing against the curb and going under the wheels of buses. 
So I, I suspect, I actually don't know how many they I think these. there are less Stradales and Scuderias than there are Speciales. Speciales, they made a lot. And I was actually told I by someone. I think around 2,000 Speciales. Is oh, it I thought less it was more than that. More? I was, yeah, I thought it was a few thousand. I, I heard from someone, and I don't know whether this is nonsense, there's roughly the same amount of F12s in the UK as there are Speciales, like built for the UK. That's a lot. And it's, yeah, three to 400. It's quite a lot. So I just drove to an event on Sunday in Zencar Driver's uh, 812 GTS. I'd love one of them. They're so nice. I'd love one of them, I'm just too poor. They're 430,000 yeah, pounds. Yeah, stupid. And I could have ordered one brand new, and I didn't. Well, this price is 380, 390. Yeah. yeah. I would have expensive. ordered it with nothing. But when you look at an 812 super fast, mm. they're still below 300. It's actually good value as well. It is, it is, but again, they dropped They dropped at the same time as my F12 did, so my cost of change is still the same as it always was. I mean, what I would say about this car, like I said before, I think this is a really exciting car to drive. Let's go down Sloan Street, shall we? Yeah. It's a very exciting car to drive, but not definitely not as a daily driver, not for regular use. I actually don't think this is a headache. Oh, I actually think- Lamborghini, wow. What? Oh, sick bruv. That is, that is nuts. I think it's actually a man through one that's chaos. Um, yeah, I actually don't, this isn't a headache. I'm actually not hating it. I thought I'd hate it. What's easier to drive, this or your Testarossa? This is way easier. Testarossa's... What's easier to drive, this or F12, or the same? Uh, F12's probably slightly easier. The steering on it is just so, you know, Lighter. so light. And you've got the double clutch. And you've got the dual clutch. But actually, there's not much in it. f 12 such a lovely car. It is, but I just, do you know what, after a while, you do get a little bit frustrated by the fact that you will never be able to exploit that car. Oh, I've exploited them. I was in Dubai in one. I drove warm roads, warm tyres, seven lanes, fine. But in the UK, UK you just have a medal. Exploit anything, if, you, if you've got 100% out of an F12 on the public roads in the UK. You actually have to you, drive that car hard to enjoy it. Your wrist it's got active aero and the aero only works above 70 or 80 miles an hour. Yep. You actually have to drive it hard to really understand what a great car it is. So I'm going to ask you a question. Yep. I had two four litres, which I loved. Yeah. But getting back into a Ferrari, there's something magical about the Ferrari. I was saying that I, I'm amazed that you got left with cash and like you swapped your four litre for cash and this. This feels like more car. Yes, the four litre is the best 911 ever made, blah, 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 whatever it is. But I don't feel like this is less car. It feels like almost twice the car. I feel like you're getting a full, basically full carbon clad, lightweight Ferrari racing car over and above a very good 911, but it's a very, it's a 911. Very, it's a very special car, this. There is mm. some, I love Porsches and I think they're better built. And the engine in the four litre is a masterpiece, but there's something special about Ferraris. They're can, magical. Can you done a, a three, no, maybe not, but you can nearly do a 3.8 997 RS and one of these for the price of a toppy four litre. Left hand drive four litres are around 300 to 350. Right hand drives are 500 and above now for a right hand drive four litre. That's crazy. Yeah. It's absolutely crazy and yours is a lefty. But when you think about the difference between a right hand drive four litre and a right hand drive Scuderia, that's a 300,000 pound difference. But they made only 29 right hand drives. I think you've made a very good trade with this car. I think you've done a very, a very good deal and I think that this generation of you know the mid 2000s kind of legendary cars and your well limited. for you to call me and say you want to feature it on your channel is something you mean, I just, yeah I just volumes I just wanted car, to right? see you Mark that was it yeah nothing to do with the car no I, this is my kind of era of car I've decided you know the mid 2000s to you know 2011 2012 I think that is a really cool era and the people that lust over those cars will come into the the money and the retirement age over them in the coming years and these will all skyrocket because it's still a new car i I, I agree in, with everything you just said this is this is uh this car is a different era to what they brought out after this especially after the 458 speciale and they put the turbo into the pista it's a completely different car the pista and i've driven a pista across portugal 
And uh, piece is good, but it's not this. The piece that did not excite me. I get it's more fun driving this around Sloan Street than I did driving a Pista across Portugal. I mean, the piece is just fast for the sake of being fast. It's I just love fast. It. Yeah. And the problem with the car that's just fast is the fact that to have any kind of experience, you have to drive fast, like really fast. Yep. And I think that's the way cars have gone after this. That number plate, there was a Rolls Royce there, number plate 1R. No way, what? Yeah. 1R, look behind you. 1R. Oh, good Lord. People really do have more money than God sometimes. That's, don't they? that's ridiculously expensive, that number plate. This is just cool as well. And the other thing about production numbers, obviously, with these cars from this era, 2008, obviously, who was buying a lightweight Ferrari in 2008? Very few people was the answer. Well, Marky Mark. For the people that watch your channel, maybe you should tell them what happened in 2008. <laughs> Mate, I've got an old audience. There, there is literally, I'm <laughs> I'm the same age as the majority of my audience. Okay. And I'm older than a lot of people think. I had Botox recently. How old are you? We're not going to get into that, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I've carbon dated myself a few I times. I met you when you were 27, I think. Yeah, exactly. And I met you ages ago. So I had Botox You look recently. younger now because you took off that big beard. Big you beard. That big beard. Bit of Botox. I'm getting. Yeah. Did you really have Botox? Yeah, the other day. It's amazing. With your forehead? <laughs> it's amazing. It's still it's still working. It's still coming in. Hold on. <laughs> I'm just falling off. What a channel this is, everyone. How's how's my hand looking? Um, yeah, I got Botox. It's amazing. Yeah, great. You should do it. No, it's fantastic. Thank you. Honestly, just a little bit, not just too much. Needles. No, you, you, don't, you just don't look at them. It's fine. Your face will just hurt a little bit. Where's the needle going? Into your forehead. Wherever you want, mate. Yeah. They can stick it wherever you want. Excellent. But they will advise you, obviously. Yeah. Uh, he's a lady called uh, Sophie Schotter. She's like award-winning. Yeah, she's fantastic. Big up, Sophie. Is she on Instagram? She is. She's definitely not watching this, so I think she's got very much interest in that. Sounds like a GoPro. <laughs> Yeah, so that doesn't tell you how far you've got behind you. It just tells you in your revert, you're in reverse, that noise. We should get this and the Merchilago together because they're kind of roughly the same era cars. Merchilago? I've got a manual Merchilago, Marky. I'm going to go in that. Mm -hmm. There we go. Well, that was fantastic. Thank ne you very much. Neutral, both paddles and engine off. And engine off. Beautiful. Well, what do you think? Have I ruined something? No, what do you uh? think? I loved it. I was actually a lot more civilised than I thought. Obviously, that was just a drive around town. So at some point, it would be cool to get these out on open roads. We should definitely do some open road driving. Proper content. But I just wanted to get to grips with this. Your Merchilago you. and this would be quite nice together on an open road. Yeah, my Merchilago, I think, is late 2006. So it's around this era. It's manual. This is kind of a little bit like a manual. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Nice having you on the channel. Uh, Mark is on YouTube. He produces his videos properly. It's got high level production uh, quality to it. And no like the dross you've just seen. Uh, the views, views are of no relevance. These high days. views, low production. High production, low views. Uh, it doesn't matter mm. how many are there. If they're the right people, it's good. Mm. Okay. Well, lovely to be on your channel. No, thank you very much. We Thanks look for forward letting me join to your uh, taking it for a proper spin. Yep, and if there's an advert at the beginning of this video or after me talking now, then please do click the link. The link will be in the pinned comment. Every single click does really help. So even if you open it and you open it in a new window and watch the video, uh, that does really, really help. Trust me more than you think. Adverts, Mark. Adverts, the way forward. <laughs> Botox. Botox and Women's adverts. Women's sunglasses and Botox. And 5.99, to, well, they've just they've gone down two quid during the video, but yeah, 5.99, 7.99, don't know what they are. But. H&M, sick. I think you get loads of views because you've got dogs on your channel. Yeah, yeah. That's not making me edit. I get to, I get to edit it. So, all right. <laughs> see you later, guys. Before I get myself in trouble. Bye. <laughs>